Clostridium difficile infection, also known as C. diff, is a symptomatic infection caused by the spore-forming bacterium Clostridium difficile, also called Clostridioides difficile. This condition is sometimes referred to as Clostridium difficile infection or Clostridium difficile-associated diarrhea. Pseudomembranous colitis is a severe inflammation of the inner lining of the large intestine and often results from a serious Clostridium difficile infection. Clostridium difficile infection is an increasing issue in healthcare settings. Approximately 20% of antibiotic-associated diarrhea cases are attributed to Clostridium difficile infection. Epidemiology. In the year 2011, there were approximately 453,000 cases of Clostridium difficile infection in the United States, resulting in 29,000 deaths. Global rates of Clostridium difficile infection increased between the years 2001 and 2016. Clostridium difficile infection is the most common microbial cause of healthcare-associated infections in United States hospitals, costing up to $4.8 billion annually for acute care facilities alone. Causation. Clostridium difficile infection is spread through the fecal-oral route. The bacterium forms heat-resistant spores that can survive on surfaces for extended periods. These spores are not effectively killed by alcohol-based hand sanitizers or routine surface cleaning. Once ingested, the spores pass through the stomach and germinate into vegetative cells in the colon upon exposure to bile acids. Pathogenic strains of Clostridium difficile produce toxins, primarily enterotoxin, also known as toxin A, and cytotoxin, also known as toxin B, which can cause diarrhea and inflammation. Without either toxin A or toxin B, colonization by Clostridium difficile is unlikely to cause pseudomembranous colitis. Antibiotics can disrupt the normal gut microbiota, allowing Clostridium difficile to proliferate. Risk factors. Risk factors for Clostridium difficile infection include antibiotic use, proton pump inhibitor use, hospitalization, other health problems, and older age. Diarrheal illnesses can also increase the risk of colonization. Long-term hospitalization or residence in a nursing home within the previous year are independent risk factors for increased colonization. The rate of Clostridium difficile acquisition is estimated to be 13% in those with hospital stays up to two weeks and 50% with stays longer than four weeks. Signs and Symptoms Symptoms of Clostridium difficile infection range from mild diarrhea to severe life-threatening inflammation of the colon. Common symptoms include watery diarrhea, fever, nausea, and abdominal pain. A key sign is new onset of more than three partially formed or watery stools per 24-hour period. Stool may have a distinctive foul odor. Complications can include pseudomembranous colitis, toxic megacolon, perforation of the colon, and sepsis. Pathophysiology and pseudomembranes. Antibiotic use alters the normal bowel microbiota, permitting Clostridium difficile overgrowth. Clostridium difficile produces toxins A and B, which cause inflammation and damage to the colon lining. Pseudomembranous colitis is characterized by the formation of pseudomembranes on the colonic mucosa. These pseudomembranes are composed of a viscous collection of inflammatory cells, fibrin, and necrotic cells. Colonoscopy can reveal inflamed colonic mucosa with raised yellowish plaques that form widespread pseudomembranes. These plaques can be up to 2 centimeters wide. Diagnosis Diagnosis of Clostridium difficile infection typically involves stool testing for the presence of Clostridium difficile toxins or the bacteria's DNA. Tests include cytotoxicity assay, toxin-enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, and polymerase chain reaction. Toxin enzyme linked immunosorbin assay has a sensitivity of 63 to 99% and a specificity of 93 to 100%. Polymerase chain reaction can detect Clostridium difficile about 93% of the time and has a false positive rate of about 3%. Colonoscopy or sigmoidoscopy may show pseudomembranes, suggesting the condition. Stool testing for a cure after symptom resolution is not recommended as colonization may persist in up to 60% of patients. Consider initiating testing for Clostridium difficile colitis on inpatients having multiple three liquid consistency stools per day. 
Complications of pseudomembranous colitis. Complications of pseudomembranous colitis can include dehydration, kidney failure, toxic megacolon, bowel perforation, peritonitis, and death. Treatment. First-line antibiotic treatments for Clostridium difficile infection include metronidazole, vancomycin, and fidaxomicin. For severe Clostridium difficile infection, oral vancomycin is often preferred. Discontinuation of the inciting antibiotic may lead to symptom resolution in about 20% of those infected within three days. Fecal microbiota transplantation is highly effective, with success rates of 85 to 90%, for recurrent Clostridium difficile infection when antibiotics have failed. Two oral fecal microbiota products, Rebiota and Vaust, have been approved for use in the United States. For a first recurrence, oral vancomycin or fidexomycin are recommended. For multiple recurrences, options include vancomycin taper and pulse, fidexomycin, rifaximin follow-up with vancomycin, or fecal microbiota transplantation. In severe cases of pseudomembranous colitis with complications like megacolon or perforation, surgery such as colectomy may be necessary. Bezlatoximab is an antitoxin antibody that can reduce the risk of Clostridium difficile infection recurrence. Recurrent infection. Recurrent Clostridium difficile infection occurs in 20 to 30% of patients after the initial infection with recurrence rates increasing with each subsequent episode. Prognosis. After initial treatment with metronidazole or vancomycin, Clostridium difficile infection recurs in about 20% of people. This increases to 40% and 60% with subsequent recurrences. The mortality rate for pseudomembranous colitis is around 2%, but higher at 15% in long-term care facilities and with toxic megacolon at 35%. Prevention. Prevention strategies include limiting antibiotic use, practicing hand hygiene, and implementing infection control measures in healthcare settings. Washing hands with soap and water is effective at removing spores, whereas alcohol-based hand rubs are not. Rigorous infection protocols, such as wearing gloves and using single-person medical devices, are important. Terminal room cleaning in hospitals with products containing chlorine bleach can help destroy spores. Preventive measures in healthcare settings are essential to minimize transmission. These include strict hand hygiene with soap and water, contact precautions for infected patients, including private rooms, gloves, and gowns for staff and visitors until at least 48 hours after diarrhea ends, thorough disinfection of environmental surfaces with chlorine-based products, judicious use of antibiotics, education of staff and visitors on hand hygiene and transmission prevention, and regular assessment of the need for antibiotics and gastric acid suppressants. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.